Bigfoot, a large, hairy, human-like being roaming the forests of North America. Most people think this creature doesn't exist, but thousands of witnesses have seen it. I know what I saw. There's no other explanation for it. Sometimes this mysterious beast is spotted crossing a road. If I would have been out of my car and saw that, I would have been terrified. Just plain terrified. A chance encounter while driving leaves a lasting impression that many will never forget. Recently, I had the opportunity to speak with Michael, a man who saw a Bigfoot near the St. Lawrence River in northern New York. This is his story. So it was about 11.30 at night. I was heading home from Ogdensburg, New York on Route 37 here. It was June 19th, 2021. Um, and I remember like it was yesterday, I remember glancing over to the field in my right and I saw movement and I thought, oh no, I'm gonna hit another deer because it was moving. And it was, um, it was moving extremely fast. But then I, I realized that it was bipedal, it wasn't a deer. It was eight feet plus tall and it was moving in a just a very fast circular motion, but all shag. It was gray white shag just moving in a, in a ferocious circular motion. It, it came out in front of me about 50 feet in front of my car. I was going about 60 and it had power and agility like I've never seen. It ran out in front of me. It, it even navigated another car from the other side. Uh, and ran into this field here. How far into the field did you see it go? Well, um, I was, you know, driving, so I only had, I only saw it into the field for maybe four or five seconds. I lost sight when it got in the middle of the field. So, but it was heading straight that way. At the end of the field that the creature crossed into is a small patch of woods. Beyond that is wetlands. This area is a state wildlife refuge where humans are not permitted. But I think it was running down to get its dinner or get a late night snack out of the wildlife refuge. That's, that's really what I believe. It was just running across the road. But it was an amazing sight to see on two feet running that fast. Now, when you described it in a circular motion, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> If you can imagine a giant circular saw, like an old wood saw blade, and it got loose from its platform, it just looked like a giant saw blade, just in this kind of motion, but extremely fast. A giant saw blade is all with fur, <laughs> is the only thing I could describe it as. It was just a blur, really. Michael's description of a circular motion is not something I've heard before. I struggle to imagine what it looked like. Do you think it could have been the front arms of like a gorilla when a gorilla runs on all fours? I kind of thought about that. I, you know, I'd imagine it was using all of its limbs to attain that speed. That's all I, that's all I could think of, but it was definitely bipedal. It was on two legs. We've all seen deer run and there's a, there's a gait and a gallop. This was bipedal and it was fast and it was moving and it was powerful it had control, it was agile, and it just weaved across the road in front of me in another car and um, down that, down into that, uh, down into that valley down there. And how, how did you feel while you were experiencing I was this? just, I was dumbfounded. I just, I couldn't believe what I'd seen. I couldn't imagine what it was. I didn't think Bigfoot. Based on Michael's description of what he saw, I can imagine the sense of bewilderment he must have for his encounter. So at what point did you start to think that it might be Bigfoot? When I got home and I, I, I wanted to document what I'd seen and put it on Facebook. So I mentioned in my post, you know, at the risk of ridicule, I'm gonna describe what I saw and, um, I started thinking, you know, may, my God, maybe this is something to do with 
the Bigfoot sightings that had been up on Willard Road. The other Bigfoot sightings Michael is referring to occurred about a mile from where he had his encounter. I also spoke with a third eyewitness who had encounters just over two miles from this location. It certainly is curious that several people have encountered this mysterious creature in this small section of the St. Lawrence Valley. And were you a, a Bigfoot believer before this? A believer? I actually hadn't really considered it at all. I mean, I've, I've heard about Bigfoot, but I was more of a skeptic than anything. And um, I'm 100% believer I've seen it. But it, it, it makes you realize there's a lot of things that we still don't understand. And when that really sets in, it, it definitely changes your life. How has it changed your, your life? It's a good question. Um, it's made me, it's made me question things more, things that we don't totally understand. It's made me feel more humble, <laughs> you know? Um, I think there's there's beings that we don't know everything about. There's, there's species that they're finding all the time that we don't know exist. I mean, we've only discovered part of what's under the ocean, for example, you know? Um, but um, it's made me become more retrospective and, and really think about uh, all of the other creatures that share this planet with us that we may not totally understand. It's hard to explain. Life-changing, I mean, it changes your belief paradigm. So, you know, it's like you, you've you seen something that not everybody has had an opportunity to see. And I, I think that's a, kind of a gift in a way. Um, but, um... Michael's story is incredible. I can understand the difficulty he has in trying to describe something that isn't supposed to exist. And, like he said, I can imagine seeing it would certainly shatter your beliefs. I know for some his encounter is impossible, but I think the other sightings in the area lend at least some credence to his account. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. This interview was filmed as part of a full documentary I'm working on about Bigfoot sightings in northern New York. I also interviewed the other two folks who had sightings near Michael's, as well as many others. I'm aiming to have the full documentary completed by the end of the year, and plan to release several more clips while I work on it. If you're interested in seeing those, hit the subscribe button, or head over to my website and sign up for my newsletter.